Hey everyone, this is Joey. In today's video, I get a chance to show off my shiny new Rainbow Odin 2 Pro, and I also get to guide you through two must-have apps for the Odin 2 that everybody should be using. This is my third Odin 2 Pro. I had the black review unit, then I bought myself the blue one, and then I bought myself this one. So if that's any indication of just how good the Odin 2 Pro is, then you have a good idea of just how much I love the thing. And so in this video, I want to show you two must-have apps that I've been using and that you should be using because they're awesome. And so first up, let's talk about the app called Odin Tools. This is developed by Langer Hands, who you can find on the AYN Discord, and they've put together an awesome tool here. My apologies if I said your name wrong, but that's the best I could do. It's a very easy install. You head to the Odin Tools GitHub page, or it's linked in the description, and install the latest release. Honestly, that's it. Once you open it, you can start to change settings. To get the quick settings tiles to show, slide down from the top and click the pencil icon on the right. Scroll down and you should see controller style and L2R2 mode tiles. Hold and drag them above to where you want them to show. Let's go over the features. So you get a quick settings tile for switching the controller style. So you can swap between retro, Xbox, or disconnect mode. This is pretty important as there are some apps where you'd want the Xbox mode for the controls to work or at the very least for the buttons to be in the right place. For example, the Xbox Game Pass app is one, or even Moonlight, or I've been told that it works with Call of Duty as well. We can take it a step further with per app settings so you don't actually have to touch it yourself. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Next up is a quick settings tile for switching the L2 and R2 mode, which you can do between analog, digital, and both. People using Digisho will know that the recommendation was to set it to both, so that the triggers work in Digisho. However, there are also other apps that just don't play well with that, and one of them is Yuzu. Yuzu doesn't like digital triggers, so you want to set Yuzu to only use analog, and we can do that with per app settings that I'll show in a bit. Another feature is a quality of life change, but you can enable it so that when you press the home button once, it goes to home instead of a double press, which is usually Digisho for most people. You can also adjust the display saturation with a slider, and it applies after a reboot. This is pretty nice for anybody that's not happy with the default saturation. Lastly, as I mentioned, we have the per app settings for controller style and L2 and R2 mode. What does this mean exactly? Well, you can set certain apps to use certain controller styles or L2 and R2 modes when they boot up, and then it reverts when they close. I mentioned it before, but one easy example is Yuzu, and you can set the triggers to use analog so that they work properly, or you can change the controller style for Xbox Game Pass to Xbox, or for a game like Honkai Star Rail to use Xbox controls as well. There's a lot of different ways that you can use this. Honestly, this is a super great feature that probably should have been baked into the operating system. I know the dev is starting to play around with other additions like performance modes and fan modes and other things like that. So keep an eye on this, but this is definitely a must have app for the Odin 2. The second must have app and actually one that will keep Odin tools up to date for you automatically, as well as other apps that use GitHub releases like Yuzu and Vita 3K, Citra Canary, RetroArch, and like I said, Odin tools. All of these apps have their best versions on GitHub, not the Play Store or anywhere else. And they're a pain to keep up to date because of that. That's where Obtanium comes in, and you might have seen this in my Retroid Pocket 4 setup video already. Obtanium basically keeps any GitHub release up to date. It'll notify you when a new update is there, let you install it from the app, and it basically acts like a little mini Play Store for GitHub. You can start to see why it's a must-have. So let's go through the setup here. 
go ahead and install Obtainium through the GitHub link, and I'll leave it in the description as well, or you can find it through Google by the dev Imran R98. In the releases section, click the show all assets link to show all available downloads. And then just download the one that says app-release.abk. Go ahead and install the APK as well. Open it and allow notifications so you know when there's an update. Now that we're in, click add app at the bottom. For Yuzu, Vita3K, and Citra Canary, they're all easy. And don't worry if you have them installed already, it doesn't really matter. What you want to do is grab their GitHub links one by one. So let's start with Yuzu. Head to the Yuzu Android GitHub link and copy the link. Head back to Obtainium and paste the link into the source URL spot, the very first line. Then click add to the right. It should now bring you to another page and if you have Yuzu installed, it'll say update or if you don't, it'll say install. Mine is up to date, so nothing for me to do. Either way, click update or install if it shows that. The first time you do this, you'll get a pop-up asking you to install unknown sources. Just go ahead and allow it. Now just repeat these same steps for the other apps except for RetroArch. So for Yuzu, Vita3K, Citra Canary, and Odin Tools, what I just showed is the steps for all of them, and it's really easy. Just go ahead, add app, paste the GitHub link, add and install or update for each. When an update is available for any app, you'll get a notification and it shows in the app, and you can just click update in the app for it to automatically do it for you. RetroArch is a little bit different, so let's go ahead. Google RetroArch BuildBot Android Nightly, and the first link should be the right one. But if not, the link should say buildbot.libretro.com slash nightly slash android. Copy that link and paste it into the source URL like you're used to. Then, instead of clicking add, scroll down and head to custom APK link filter. In this field, type in retroarch underscore arch64.apk, and you have to match the same capitalizations and everything. It has to look the same, so exactly how you see it. Then click add to add the app and install or update. Now all of those apps will be auto-updated and life will be great. That's gonna be it for this one. Odin Tools and Obtainium are two must-have apps for the Odin 2. And actually, Obtainium is useful for any Android device, so you should be using it for any of your Android handhelds. It makes your life so much easier. Have you found any other must-have apps? Can you live without them? Share them in the comments below so that you can share them with everybody else. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow, and hope you all have a good one.